All right, so as you can see, the mannequin here is completely visible, but if we hit our key that we assigned, our character goes invisible and then back to visible. What is up, you guys? Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to make a stealth material asset for your characters or for pretty much anything. So the very first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to right click. We're going to want to go to materials and textures. And then from here, you're going to want to get a material function. Then we'll just name this uh, stealth. Once that's done, open that up. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to right click and do make material attributes. From here, drag out and do input function input. And from here, we are going to drag out once more. We're going to get the material attributes. And then this is what's actually going to be connecting in to our uh, output results. All right, so the next thing we are going to want to do is we're actually going to want to make two of these. So I do apologize. We're going to want to drag that in like so. And for the array type here, if we do this plus to add an element, we can see that we get our base color, but we are going to want to change this base color to normal. And then for our second one here, we're going to want to get two more elements, which is going to be our normal and our opacity mask. Now, what we do is we will just apply this real quick and move this out of our way and come back to our menu. And we're going to want to right click, go to materials and textures and get a material parameter collection. And we'll name this uh, stealth P pram, stealth pram, because it's our stealth parameter. All right, so now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to open this up real quick, and we're going to want to get three scalar parameters. And if we just actually make these a little bit bigger here so we can see what's going on, the first one is going to be our opacity. And the value which is give one and our last one here is going to be our normal depth and that is going to be left at zero and basically we're just going to save that and close it out because we don't need that all right so the next thing we are going to want to do is we're going to want to right click do a collection parameter and we are from the parameter name we're going to want to get our normal depth our opacity and our uv multiplier Change this real quick. There we go. Control C, Control V. We'll change the name of that to Opacity. Control V, Control C. And we'll name this our UV. Sorry about that. It's been a long day, but yep. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make three separate boxes, which is going to be the ones that we just got: our normal depth, our opacity, and our UV uh, multi. All right, so now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set up our opacity. But one thing I realized I did make a mistake on is I got the material attributes when I should have set material attributes. So that was my mistake. Remove that and have that connect into here. And then we're going to basically just do the same thing. Uh, so the two arrays and then the... that selected we're going to do our normal and then we're also going to do our opacity mask now if you realize here the get material is going to be on the right where the set material is going to be on the left and that's where that little mistake came in so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to drag off and we're going to do a dither temporal aa and we're going to just run this into our opacity mask and the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set up our uv and then our normal death aspect of things so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to uh, get a texture corn texture coordinate if we hold t and click we will get a texture sample and what we're going to do now is from our text cord here we're going to have to line some stuff up we are going to want to do a multiply multiplier connect our multi UV to B. Right, from here, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to do a hold P click, get a panner, 
and then just connect this to our coordinate. And for our speed, we're going to do a 0 0.01. And for our speed y, it's going to be a 0 0.1. But make sure that this is a negative 0 0.01. All right, so what we're going to want to do now is we're just going to connect our coordinate into our UV. And then what we're also going to want to do is we're going to want to change the texture of this. Now, of course, I'm just going to do this for an example. Uh, so I'm just going to do the brick clay. You can use whatever texture you want to use that fits you best. But what I'm also going to do now is I'm going to hold down L and click to get a lerp. And our A, uh, well, actually, first, before we do that, is we are going to want to hold it and click with three and then we're going to want to change our constant color here to uh, zero red zero green and then we're going to want to do one blue and once that is done we're actually going to connect that in to a and our rgb is actually going to be connected in for our b lastly our normal depth is going to be our l for this one all right so now what's going to happen is we don't have anything set up for our normal here so to do this, we are going to want to do a add, and from that, we're going to plug in our lerp result for B, and then that is going to actually be connected in to the normal aspect. All right, so now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to do a save, and we're going to want to actually go to our mannequin here, to our character, and then from our character to the materials, and then get the body and in here is where the fun stuff's going to begin so what we're going to do is we're going to make a control v of the matte linear blend and actually change this to our stealth that we had and then just simply connect and add that in so once that's done you're going to want to go to your uh, third person bp or whatever blueprint you're using you're actually going to want to get to your third person character, first person character, open that up and go to your viewport. The reason I want you to open this is because I actually want you to realize that the character mesh here is still synced to the male body and that's why we specifically set it up into that. Yeah, we have the chest logo, but that is actually a separate uh, an attachment, so to say, and it's not the entire body itself. So that's why we focus that. Now, from there, we are going to want to go to Event Graph, and what we're going to do now is we're going to give some functionality. So, if we do uh, Keyboard Event, and maybe if we did uh, the number 2, so that means when we press number 2, it is going to be activating or deactivating our stealth ability and then from here what we're going to do is we're going to one press do a flip flop and from here we are going to want to for a well, actually get a timeline first time timeline here it is add timeline and for a it's going to be play from start and b it's going to be reversed and this is where we're going to be adding our animation. So if you double click, we're going to want to do two float tracks. So what we're going to want to do now is we're actually going to want to name this top one here to opacity. And the next one is actually going to be our normal depth. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add a keyframe at a zero, at a time of zero, and a value of one. And the next one is actually going to be at the time of one with a value of about uh, 0.25. And our length is going to be set to one as well because we're uh, not going to be running a whole five seconds. It's just going to be running in one second. So for our second one here, we're going to want to add a key with a time of zero and a value of zero as well. And the second point is going to be at a time of 1 with a value of 20. Compile and save. And now if we go back to our event graph, what we're going to want to do is from our update, we are going to want to uh, set a scale R parameter value. 
our collection of which is actually going to be our stealth parameter that we created and our parameter name is going to be opacity and connect that in as well to our parameter value and so what we're going to do is we're going to want to duplicate this as well but what we're going to do is now instead of opacity we are going to be focusing on our normal depth and why there we go uh for our normal depth all right so now that that's all done if we compile and save we can go back here and if we press play as you can see the mannequin here is completely visible but if we hit our key that we assigned our character goes invisible and then back to visible